Bronx Journal. I'm your guest host, Josidi Sureña. Every day, dozens of tenants in the Bronx are brought to housing court by their landlords. Housing court, originally designed as a place where tenants could sue their landlords for repairs, is now being called an eviction mill and a collection agency by many in the housing community. Housing Court Answers, a nonprofit agency, has been assisting unrepresented tenants in court since the 1980s. Here to talk about their important work in Bronx Housing Court, Coordinator Jessica Hurd. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. And so we're talking about Housing Court, and you hear things like eviction mill, collection agency, but what is Bronx Housing Court really like? Well, Bronx Housing Court is a really busy place, and you know, often when we're telling tenants how to create a settlement with their landlords, we're telling them to expect what's called the Bronx Payment Plan, which really just means that the judge is going to want to know how off, how much money they owe and how much time it's going to take for them to pay it. And they sort of assume that the tenants actually do owe the money and that there are no good defenses or reasons why they shouldn't have to pay the money that's due. And so what is Housing Court Answer's role in the court? Well, our role is to educate and empower tenants to, well, anybody that's there without a lawyer, to um, be able to advocate for themselves in front of the judge. So we explain to them what the procedure is, what's going to happen. We explain to them what the law says, what their defenses may be in the case. And we talk to them a little bit about how to negotiate with the lawyer for their landlord. And so at what stage in the Housing Court case do people come to see you? We see people at all stages of the case. The lucky ones, are the good cases for us, are the ones when people come right away at the beginning of their case, even before they actually speak to the court about the case. But we see people even up to the point where they've already been evicted. We give information to everybody. And so who do you assist, landlords and tenants? Well, we talk to everybody that comes to the table. It could be landlords, tenants, housing advocates, even lawyers sometimes. But um, most of the people that are in housing court without lawyers are tenants, and that's most of our clients. And so is there anything really unique to being a housing advocate um, in the court but not really employed by the court? Well, it's actually a great place to be because we can be in the court every day and see what's happening, what, what problems are arising with um, people who are being brought to court, but we also can still be critical and bring up the problems without having to worry about being employed by the court. Right. So you said you provide legal information to people without attorneys in Housing Court. Are there any other sort of services that Housing Court Answers provides that our public should be aware of? Aside from having the table in the court, we also have a hotline that people can call. They can ask questions about Housing Court cases and also they can talk about um, where they can get help to pay their back rent. We do a referral service for rental arrears assistance so people can call to find out what charities will be able to help them with their case. Um, generally, they're going to be asked some questions about their case like how much money they owe and how much their rent is, what their income is, what reason they fell behind. Generally they need to have enough money to pay the rent going forward mm -hmm. and they need to have a good reason why they fell behind. I see, I see. And the organization you work for, Housing Court Answers, recently changed their name from the Citywide Task Force on Housing Court to Housing Court Answers. What, what is behind the name change? Well, about 30 years ago when we started as an organization we were called the Citywide Task Force on Housing Court, mm -hmm. which was a task task force of groups, different community groups that got together to give information about housing court, but they were volunteers that went to court a couple of times a week. Since then we've turned into an organization that is actually full empl of employees. So we wanted to change our name to update it a little bit more about what we do now and also to be very clear. What do we provide? We provide answers about housing court. So I want to get to some of the underlying issues in housing court. Um, we know that more cases are filed for non-payment of rent than any other types of cases in court. And so what's behind that? Is it just people not paying their rent or is it, as some of us suspect, are rents in New York City just way too high? Well, across the Bronx, the rents are, are really high in a lot of instances. Some people come to my table and show me pictures of their apartments and they're paying twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for a one or two bedroom apartment. That's a lot of money. Um, another problem that comes up is that the programs that are helping tenants pay the rent will make mistakes, things get messed up, and the rent doesn't get paid. Um, there's also a group, group of tenants that will come in and they will say that they did not pay their rent because they were trying to force their landlord to do something, most often to make repairs, and so they hold their rent expecting the landlord to take them to court. And so how much um, does the economy play into this? How, what was it like in court when this recession first hit? Well, housing court's always been a really busy place, um, but when the recession first hit, we started seeing a whole lot of people who had always 
you know, had a job and been able to pay their rent, no problem, all of a sudden were unable to pay their rent, and they'd never had to access housing court, they'd never had to apply for public benefits, unemployment, uh, food stamps, and they're just, they're scared and they're confused, and they didn't know what to do, and there was a huge amount of people. Like but according that. to the experts, we're out of the recession. We've been out of the recession since summer 2009. So can you feel that in housing court? Every day in housing court, we're still seeing people who don't, who have never been to court before. Uh, a lot of people's unemployment benefits are running out, and so now they're trying to find another income or another way, and it's just, it's a big problem still in court. And so I want to talk about homelessness. I know you're not an expert on homelessness. You're in the work of eviction prevention. Mm -hmm. But recently, the Daily News did highlight a study conducted by the city's Department of Homeless Services, whereby some groups were placed in a control group, some families were placed in a control group, mm -hmm. and were then denied eviction prevention services. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell us about that study? So the um, Department of Homeless Services funds uh, community groups which are called home base and their goal is to prevent people from going into the shelter. And so they wanted to prove that the services that they provide are important services and they actually do prevent people from going to the shelter. So they took all of the people that are eligible for their services and they put them into either the group of people who will get services or the group of people who will not get services. And they're going to track by their social security number how many of the people that did not get services actually end up in the shelter. Um, they want to show that their services are important. And But we, a fear that we have is that people who are denied the services may get evicted and instead of going to the shelter will go stay with a family member or find somewhere else, move out of the city, something like this. So they won't even actually be counted. Right, right. right. That's, the, that's the problem with this thing. Right, right. And so um, I know that in the past uh, Housing Court Answers has been influential in a, a number of projects. Um, you yourself were personally responsible for getting the 12 things you should know posted in Housing Court. It's sort of a makeshift uh, rights of tenants mm -hmm. or a tip, a guide for unrepresented tenants in Housing Court. Is, is Housing Court Answers working on anything like that now? Well, right now we're currently updating our information sheets. Our information sheets were written many years ago and so we're trying to update them with the changes in the law. We're trying to make them very user-friendly, easy to understand, easy to take the information and use it in court to win your case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so you mentioned that you have information tables and the hotline, mm -hmm. um, and how can people get in contact with you? Well, if you want to walk into housing court, you can walk up to the table and speak to me. We just have a walk-in service. I also have two colleagues that are there every day, and we also have a hotline, like I said, that people can call. So the number for the hotline is 212-962-4795, and you can call that hotline to ask questions or speak to somebody 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. I want to touch back onto um, city agencies and, and the disconnect between these city agencies and actual eviction prevention work like yours. Mm -hmm. um, how can these city agencies and, and organizations like yours work better um, together to get with tenants what they need, to get New York City what they need? Well, they can pay the money more quickly when they agree to pay it. Um, what happens is when people apply for assistance with their back rent from the city, it takes a very long time and a lot of paperwork to get it. But Housing Court, while they understand the process, they don't want to give the amount of time it needs to get the money a lot of times. And so people, for instance, if you come to court with a letter saying You're, we're going to help you, the judge may not give you the time it's going to take to get that check. And so they need, we would like to see them speed up a little bit with that. Right. And so we see uh, bed bugs in the Ooh. news all day. Um, how is that in housing court? Do you see a lot of these uh, cases for repairs, tenants bringing their landlords for that? Bed bugs is a huge problem in the Bronx. Um, it takes a lot of extermination to get rid of them, and the landlords in the Bronx just don't want to do it. So then the problem spreads from apartment to apartment to apartment because the landlord doesn't take care of it in the first place. We see a ton of people coming in trying to start cases against their landlord for um, bed bug extermination. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about housing court. What, what is a typical day for you like in housing court? There's no really typical day. Um, I go to court in the morning and I sit at the table and I answer questions as people come along. Um, generally most days I'm helping people fill out forms explaining what the forms are, what the questions are and what they might, how they could answer the questions. Um, 
a lot of times I'm explaining what people can expect. People come to court, they get the first notice from their landlord and they freak out. They get very scared. They don't know what to expect. A lot of my day is just explaining to people, first you have to do this and then this is going to happen and then you're going to speak with the judge. And so what made you go into this kind of work? I, I feel like housing court is a scary and dangerous place and I just want people, I want to help people give people the information so that they don't have to be scared of accessing the government.